Good evening. History in the making is taking place right now. Charles III has been formally proclaimed King of the United Kingdom by the Accession Council in a ceremony televised live for the first time. We can now see people gathering on the balcony overlooking the Friary Court and that proclamation will soon be read at St James's Palace in London uh, for all of the public to hear. So it looks like it's about to take place very soon. Everyone is in place and here we go. We'll take you there live right now. His mercy, our late sovereign lady, Queen Elizabeth II, of blessed and glorious memory, by whose decease the crown of the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland is solely and rightfully come to the Prince Charles Philip Arthur George. We, therefore, the Lords spiritual and temporal of this realm and members of the House of Commons, together with other members of Her Late Majesty's Privy Council and representatives of the realms and territories aldermen and citizens of London and others, do now hereby, with one voice and consent of tongue and heart, publish and proclaim that the Prince Charles Philip Arthur George is now, by the death of our late sovereign of happy memory, become our only lawful and rightful liege lord, Charles III by the grace of God, of the United Kingdom, of Great Britain and Northern Ireland, and of his other realms and territories, King, Head of the Commonwealth, Defender of the Faith, to whom we do acknowledge all faith and obedience with humble affection, beseeching God, by whom kings and queens do reign, to bless his majesty with long and happy years to reign over us, given at St. James's Palace this 10th day of September in the year of our Lord, 2022. Three cheers for His Majesty the King. Hip hip! Hooray! Hip hip! Hooray! Hip hip!
Incredible to think we are watching such a historic moment live on television, the first time this ceremony has been televised across the world. It is the public part of the proclamation of King Charles III, officially proclaimed king in the past hour or so. OK, we'll leave those live pictures there for now. And we'll now take a look at the lead up to that historic moment. For the first time in 70 years, Britain has woken without their Queen and King Charles without his mother. King Charles III left Her Majesty's side at Balmoral overnight, touching down in London and arriving at Buckingham Palace to a mass of well wishes. And today he addressed the world for the first time as our new King. At the gates of Buckingham Palace. The vintage Rolls Royce used by Queen Elizabeth now cowering the new monarch. A crowd in mourning taking in the first tentative steps of the kingdom's Queen Consort Camilla and King Charles III. A moment to console and congratulate. Charles seemed touched by the warmth of the reception. There was a time when there was talk the crown should skip to his son. None of that today. Plenty of handshakes, even a cheeky kiss for a king. He looked sad. Yeah. He did look sad. You know, he's just lost his mum. Charles and Camilla made it to Balmoral for the Queen's final moments. So, as he took in the tributes, grief over her passing, while acknowledging the best wishes for a job he's waited so long for. The couple had come to the palace for one of the defining moments for a new monarch, the first speech. So Charles, his eyes red, the sadness etched on his face, a promise to his subjects. I too now solemnly pledge myself throughout the remaining time God grants me to uphold the constitutional principles at the heart of our nation. 
And wherever you may live in the United Kingdom or in the realms and territories across the world, and whatever may be your background or beliefs, I shall endeavor to serve you with loyalty, respect, and love, as I have throughout my life. Watched in pubs across the UK, in London. That promise of lifelong service. I and in Edinburgh. Whatever may be your background or beliefs. The King takes the crown, leaving his titles to his heir, Prince William. Today, I am proud to create him Prince of Wales, to Wusog Cymru, the country whose title I've been so greatly privileged to bear during so much of my life and duty. With Catherine beside him, our new Prince and Princess of Wales will, I know, continue to inspire and lead our national conversations, helping to bring the marginal to the centre ground where vital help can be given. For Harry, who left Balmoral without seeing the Queen before she died, an olive branch. I want also to express my love for Harry and Meghan as they continue to build their lives overseas. His voice echoing to the congregation in his favourite cathedral, St Paul's. And he left it to the end to bear his heart. And to my darling Mama, as you begin your last great journey to join my dear late Papa, I want simply to say this. Thank you. Thank you for your love and devotion to our family and to the family of nations you have served so diligently all these years. May flights of angels sing thee to thy rest. The first King's speech hitting the mark. He's made a very good start, and I'm proud to call him Mucky. At St Paul's, a new beginning celebrated with a new ending. At the palace, a freshly anointed king with new Prime Minister Liz Truss. Your Majesty. And then a glimpse into the character of the new king, sensitive but ready to get on with the job. But it's been so touching uh, this afternoon when we arrived here. All those people mm. come to give their condolences. Your flowers. Majesty, my very, very sincere very condolences. You're very kind. It's the moment I've been dreading, mm. as, as I know a lot of people have. But mm. Mm. try and keep everything going. Absolutely. Come, come, come. Thank you. Have a look, see. In the darkest hours after Diana's death, it was Camilla Charles turned to. Now the new king and his queen will be supporting one another, trying to measure up to the legacy left by his mother. I count on the loving help of my darling wife, Camilla. In recognition of her own loyal public service since our marriage 17 years ago, she becomes my queen consort. I know she will bring to the demands of her new role the steadfast devotion to duty on which I have come to rely so much. Mark Burroughs, Nine News. Hundreds of people have gathered in Windsor to pay their respects following the Queen's death. Flowered tributes and letters to the late monarch lining the palace walls as the country mourns. <laughs> As the new monarch takes his place inside Buckingham Palace, outside, Britain mourns its leading lady. I'm feeling up and down, sad, but joyful. And it's a very precious place to come to, and, and the nation wants to be here. London's landmarks, now memorials for the Queen. At Westminster Abbey, where Elizabeth was married and crowned, the bells tolled for an hour. 
In 11 days, she'll be farewelled inside, the first royal funeral to be held there in more than 250 years. The large public setting, a testament to the love of her subjects and the scale of her loss. So we commend your faithful servant, Elizabeth, into your arms of mercy. This Thanksgiving service at St Paul's, an opportunity for prayer, reflection and grief. Gun salutes across the United Kingdom and its territories. A tribute to her service. A procession of horses pulled guns to Hyde Park, faced the palace and fired 96 rounds. One for each year of Her Majesty's life. And so begins the pomp and ceremony as the palace marks the end of one era and ushers in a new era for the British monarchy. In Scotland, mourners made their pilgrimage to the gates of Balmoral Castle, the holiday home where Her Majesty passed, a place where stiff royal etiquette could be set aside for six weeks a year. We try to afford her some privacy and protection so that she's not just the Queen, she can be a mum, she can be a grandmother and she can live a, a norm, as much as a normal life as she would be allowed to. Oh, I can't put it into words. I really can't put it into words. She's been there all my life and she's done everything right and never put a foot wrong. Sentiments echoed in Edinburgh. It's like losing your grandmother. It's really like losing your grandmother. She's been there my entire life. Tomorrow, her coffin will arrive here to lie in state for 24 hours. While at Windsor Castle, candles, corgis and handwritten notes. Those personal memories overtaking the gates of Buckingham Palace, the enduring legacy of a woman whose life was defined by her duty and devotion. In London, Amelia Adams, Nine News. Here in WA, mourners have paid their respects to the late monarch, Perth, the last Australian city Her Majesty visited. Olivia Donaldson, it's been a big reaction. It has, Natalia. Um, WA here has felt all of the morning has been just people flocking here and far and wide. The impact has really been felt here in WA. State Parliament has paused for a week. The Brownlow has also been rescheduled for Sunday, uh, September 18, to not have any potential clash with the royal funeral. But it's the impact of the hearts of the people that has been the biggest. More than 14,000 kilometres from Buckingham Palace, tributes for a Queen well loved by Western Australians. We just want to pay our respects to a very beautiful, beautiful, loving woman. A steady stream of mourners making their way to Government House, tributes growing by the minute, the young and the old paying respect to our longest serving monarch. She's always been our Queen wherever we've lived, so we've lived all over the world, now we're living in Perth. What did you want to say to the Queen? Did you write in the book? Yeah, and what did you say to her? Thank you. Overnight, Perth landmarks lit up in honour of Her Majesty. Council House, Matagara Bridge, Optus Stadium, even the trees of Kings Park bathed in royal purple. I just feel like never in our lifetime again are we ever going to see a Queen, or in my lifetime, even my son's lifetime. Among today's crowds, those lucky enough to meet the Queen in the flesh. About a metre away from the Queen and I said, welcome to Perth, Your Majesty, and did a little curtsy. I've never curtsied in my life, it just took over me. 83-year-old Maurice Sly was working in London in 1964 when she received a special invitation. Commanded by Her Majesty to invite Miss Mary Slice to an afternoon party in the garden of Buckingham Palace. The then 26-year-old wearing a bridesmaid's dress from a friend's wedding to the once-in-a-lifetime occasion. Pretty special, yeah. You, you thought you were quite an um, you know, <laughs> invitation to go to that. Wow, that's a pretty big time. Many taking the time to contribute to the condolence book and leave handwritten notes at the gardens of Government House. Rest in eternal peace, Your Majesty. Thank you, ma'am. Forever loved and adored by all. The condolence book will remain here at Government House Ballroom for the rest of the official mourning period before it's bound and placed in state archives. I think I'll remember that I'm not going to spend like the last few coins of with Queen Elizabeth on there. 
because you won't get one of them anymore. It'll take some time for Australia's currency to be rebranded. Existing coins bearing the face of Queen Elizabeth II will remain legal and in circulation. I wouldn't be surprised if it's 12 to 18 months before we see coins bearing the portrait of King Charles III. Tomorrow, Governor Chris Dawson, Premier Mark McGowan and Deputy Premier Roger Cook will meet at Government House to sign the proclamation of the new king, a king some West Australians believe will do great things. I actually think Charles is going to be fabulous. Olivia Donaldson, Nine News. Still to come, live performances around the world become real-time tributes to Queen Elizabeth. Elton Johns will stop you in your tracks. And how a Dockers coach met Her Majesty. As the world mourns the passing of the Queen, many are finding their own ways to honour her memory, from comedians to presidents and music royalty. From a music on, king... And we celebrate her life tonight with music, OK? The piano man who sang for Diana... And it seems to me you lived your life like a candle in the wind Never fading with the sunset when the rain set in 25 years on, again playing for those in grief, honouring the woman who knighted him in a way only he can. The Queen's influence spanning generations. In New York, it was a pop prince, Harry Styles. Join me in a round of applause for 70 years of service who had a Madison Square Gardens crowd on its feet. And at Monza, the usually roaring engines of Formula One were silent. For a monarch who loved a different kind of horsepower, but whose impact crossed boundaries and borders from the city of love, a single rose. With her passing, we all feel an emptiness. Across an ocean, in a place that long ago broke away from British rule, UK flags lined Washington DC's Pennsylvania Avenue and President Joe Biden prepared to travel to London. You going to the Queen's funeral, sir? Yes. I don't know what the details are yet, but I will be going. Also likely are royal families from Spain, Belgium, Norway, Denmark, Sweden and the Netherlands in one of the largest gatherings of world leaders in years. And for a woman who loved a joke. She stood up to fascists and she stood behind them. And She came to power in 1952. You understand how long that is? That means she's seen Adam West as Batman, Michael Keaton as Batman. In the United States, Jonathan Kersley, Nine News. There are iconic photos shared around the country. Queen Elizabeth II presented with an AFL football during her 2011 visit to WA. Her Majesty learning Aussie rules from a former Fremantle Dockers coach. A football in hand, watching our favourite game. So this is really popular. Yeah. The Queen curious about Aussie rules during a tour of Waterford's Clontarf Aboriginal College. This was 11 years ago, but for Gerard Neesham, it feels like yesterday. It was an amazing experience meeting the Queen. Uh, it's up there with anything I've ever done before because she is so special. The inaugural Fremantle Dockers coach attempted to explain the rules of our football code to the monarch. I mean, that's confusing for us Australians, let alone for someone from England, how Aussie rules, you know, goes. But um, she was very intrigued by the football. But found it easier talking about horse racing instead. You're sort of a bit overawed, really, in a way. You, you're hardly even listening to what the conversation is. You just, whoa, <laughs> we've got to get through this one without messing up. The visit rounded out by dropping into a kangaroo stew cooking class and an appreciation of Indigenous culture. While outside the gates, hundreds of royal watchers waited to catch a glimpse of royalty. The Queen was 85 years old when she visited the college in 2011. It was also her 16th and final visit to Australia, leaving behind special memories for those lucky enough to see her. I I just feel very privileged to have met such a wonderful human and, you know, one of the all-time great humans. I mean, you're pretty fortunate to have done it. Ezra Holt, Nine News. 
A high tea, a pint and a minute's silence. How Australians are saying thanks to a, life, a lifetime rather, of service. Plus, what tickled the fancy of British Parliament as they walked down memory lane? Welcome back. Her official title was Queen of the United Kingdom, but Elizabeth toured down under so many times we like to think of ourselves as her favourite subjects. Today Australians took the chance to say cheers. All the makings of a very British afternoon tea, but taken outside the Aussie way. To Her Majesty, yes. may she rest in peace. Let's call it a cuppa for the Queen. It's nice now to come and commemorate all the hard work she's done. We get to have the high tea and um, enjoy the beautiful day in Sydney. Pinkies up, jam before cream, a girl's day out to toast the one they'd worshipped for decades. A true lady, a lady that we can all admire and live up to. Up the road, the lads raised a schooner to the new sovereign. He's had a bit of a decent apprenticeship, so he should be able to uh, know what he's doing. But amid the impromptu celebrations, there was official ceremony. On the Queen's Terrace at Federal Parliament, wreaths laid at her feet, first by the Governor-General, then the Prime Minister. So many Australians uh, have made moving tributes and are mourning uh, this enormous loss. Recognition stretching from our political class to our sporting heroes. In Penrith, the rowdy Panthers Eels NRL crowd last night hushed at an MCG bathed in purple Vale Queen Elizabeth the only light in a spine tingling darkness <laughs> Melbourne's Flinders Street Station and Federation Square lit in the royal hue as well Brisbane City Hall the Story Bridge but it was the Opera House opened by Her Majesty in 1973 that would steal the show. A striking image of our Queen taken on her 2006 tour here, projected onto Sydney's crown jewel. It was pretty sobering to see that, but uh, very special. As the tributes mount at the gates of Buckingham Palace, so too here at Government House, but far from grief and sorrow, these are all messages of thanks from grateful subjects. I actually drove down from the mid-north coast and picked the flowers all the way down. It was the sort of last royal tour, we thought. Makeshift memorials popping up around the country. At St Andrew's Cathedral, they queued to sign the condolence book. At her coronation, I was about six or seven, and we were up in London watching the parade go by, and my sister and I were so thrilled that the Queen was on our side of the coach and of course she waved to us, <laughs> only, only us. <laughs> Memories of a woman whose simple dedication to duty transcends generations. It's probably never too early to learn about a life of service. Liz Daniels, Nine News. British MPs have begun two days of tributes to the Queen in a special session of the House of Commons. So far it's been a mix of reverence and tears with more than a few anecdotes. The one house in her realm in which the Queen could not set foot. Yeah. Gathering to celebrate her life. Liz Truss, anointed Prime Minister by the Queen's hands just days ago, led the way. Her late Majesty, Queen Elizabeth II, was one of the greatest leaders the world has ever known. Yeah. She was the rock on which modern Britain was built. Former PMs who met regularly with the Queen recounted their greatest moments and their worst. Theresa May recalling a picnic at Balmoral and some dropped cheese. I had a split second decision to make. <laughs> I picked up the cheese, put it on the plate and put it on the table. <laughs> and I turned round to see that my every move <laughs> had been watched very carefully by Her Majesty the Queen. <laughs> I looked at her, she looked at me, <laughs> and she just smiled. <laughs> and the cheese remained on the table. <laughs> But it was Boris Johnson making his first appearance since stepping down that struck the chord which resonated with everyone in this room. That she became the greatest 
statesman and diplomat of all. And she knew instinctively how to cheer up the nation, how to lead a celebration. I remember her innocent joy more than 10 years ago after the opening ceremony of the London Olympics when I told her that the leader of a friendly Middle Eastern country seemed actually to believe that she had jumped out of a helicopter <laughs> in a pink dress and parachuted into the stadium. And I remember her equal pleasure on being told just a few weeks ago that she had been a smash hit in her performance with Paddington Bear. Tea? Oh, yes, please. <gasps> And the fact that today we can say with such confidence, God save the King, is a tribute to him, but above all to Elizabeth the Great, who worked so hard for the good of her country, not just now, but for generations to come. That is why we mourn her so deeply, and it is in the depths of our grief that we understand why we loved her so much. Every MP from every corner of this often divided kingdom united in a minute's silence. She was a remarkable person, a remarkable monarch, and we are the poorer for her going. A house together in honouring the past tonight, looking forward to the king. We owe him our loyalty and devotion. The British people, the Commonwealth, and all of us in this House will support him as he takes our country forward to a new era of hope and progress, our new Carolean age. The Crown endures, our nation endures, and in that spirit, I say, God save the King. In London, Charles Croucher. Nine News. Next in Nine News, the symbolic end of the Elizabeth era. Our coins, passports and stamps all set for a facelift. Fremantle are right now trying to book their place in a preliminary final. Let's go live to Paddy Sweeney at the MCG. And Paddy, they have a massive task against Collingwood and their army of fans. They certainly do, Natalia. It's the Dockers up against 91,000 Mad Magpies fans. But defying the odds is, is what the Dockers have done all season. Fremantle, given little chance of aggressing, now fighting for a spot in the final four. The Lions roar, burying the demons as Berry cops a ban. And Finch's farewell, the skipper signals time in the one-day arena. Welcome back to the MCG, where the Dockers are currently underway in their semi-final clash against Collingwood. A massive crowd in excess of 90,000 fans has packed out the stands for the cutthroat final, the majority wearing black and white in support of the Magpies. In Perth, it was the colour purple dominating pubs right across the suburbs, cheering on Fremantle in their biggest match in almost a decade. On field, it's the Magpies setting the early pace, leading by 28 points. Here's some of the first half highlights. Deep ball, Majacek, Ginevan, there'll be some noise, kicks it, puts it in the back of the net, pies are away. What a find he's been. Brennan Cox tracks him, will he let him get past? He's got hold of him. Oh, Cox with a huge play. The advantage has been paid, and not sure the goal he wanted, and he did want it. Of course he did. And the Pies have kicked the first three goals. The winner of tonight's game will meet the Swans in a preliminary final in Sydney next Saturday. And it's an empty feeling at Melbourne, their quest for back-to-back -back premierships crushed by Brisbane. The Lions have set up a cutthroat preliminary final against the Cats, but a star midfielder has been offered a one-match suspension. Beat up and downcast, the Demons limping into Casey, still coming to terms with their failed premiership defence. Still stinging, um, still really disappointing. Started really strongly, um, second half was poor and it's probably been a bit of a theme this year. From 28 points in front, they fell in a heap. Out the back comes Bailey, Bailey with superior speed, runs in and kicks the sealer. 
Simon Goodwin declaring on-field deficiencies led to the straight sets exit and not the decision to select underdone players. I don't think Christian Petrarca looks sore tonight. I think he actually played to a pretty high level. You know, Bailey Fritch kicked two goals. Um, so we certainly won't be using that as an excuse. The focus now is on retaining Luke Jackson and if that fails, pursuing Brody Grundy. So yeah, you feel, you know, you feel pretty empty at the moment, but we'll look at our wounds and can come back better as a footy club. From despair to jubilation for the Lions, the boil over marking their first win at the G in eight years, a date with Geelong awaits for a spot in the decider and with Joe Danaher set to return, Chris Fagan's men feel they can go all the way. There's strong belief and, and games like last night just add to that belief, so it's an exciting position for the club. Sunglasses shielding any damage to Clayton Oliver's face, but Jared Berry rubbed out of the clash with the Cats, given a week for scratching at the Demons' eyes, while Lincoln McCarthy has come under fire for appearing to taunt Harrison Petty with mock tears. Mitch Turner, Nine News. Aaron Finch will play his final one-day international match for Australia against New Zealand tomorrow. The captain announcing his retirement, having just scored 26 runs from his last seven ODIs. I could have tried to play another series, the, the series against England post-World Cup, and that would have been a bit of a fairy tale finishing at the MCG, but I think that that's never been my style to be self-indulgent in any kind of way. Finch will remain in charge of Australia's T20 side for next month's World Cup. And teenage tennis sensation Carlos Alcaraz has won yet another epic five-set match, advancing to his first major tennis final at the US Open. American Francis Tiafo saving match point in the fourth, forcing the Spaniard into a deciding set. But that's when the 19-year-old went to another level, sealing victory in just under four and a half hours. Oh, he does it again. Alcaraz will take on Casper Ruud in the title decider, the winner to become the new world number one. So Natalia, plenty at stake over there at Flushing Meadows. So too here at the MCG at halftime. It's Collingwood leading the Dockers by 28 points. A little bit similar to last week. I'm going to still back them in to make a big surge in the second half. OK, Paddy, I have my fingers crossed. They're good at a comeback. <laughs> Thanks for that. <laughs> Next, on this special edition of Nine News, the alterations to the symbols we've known for 70 years. How coins, passports and lawyer titles will change. And Kelly, oh, and Kelly Haywood will have your weather details from East Perth. Hi, Kel. Hi Natalia, well enjoy that sunshine this weekend while you can because next weekend the rain moves in up to 25 millimetres expected on Tuesday and the chance of a thunderstorm but I'll have more on that in your full forecast coming up very soon. We've seen history in the making this hour. Charles III officially proclaimed King of the United Kingdom at a ceremony in London. The Accession Council was broadcast on TV for the first time. I am deeply aware of this great inheritance and of the duties and heavy responsibilities of sovereignty which have now passed to me. In taking up these responsibilities, I shall strive to follow the inspiring example I have been set. In Australia, a ceremony will be held at Parliament House tomorrow. The Queen's funeral may not be until Wednesday the 21st of September as the strict royal timetable of mourning continues to change. The new King, Charles III, is right now being officially presented to the nation, at which time flags will be raised back to full mast for 24 hours. Tomorrow, it's understood the Queen's coffin could begin its journey by road from Balmoral Castle in Scotland to Edinburgh. On Tuesday, King Charles will travel to the UK nations of Scotland, Northern Ireland and Wales over a period of days. On Wednesday, Her Majesty's coffin is due to arrive at Buckingham Palace where it is expected to rest until Thursday when there'll be a ceremonial procession through London to Westminster Hall. The Queen will then lie in state until the day of her funeral. During this time, it's expected hundreds of thousands of people will pay their respects.
Also around this time, heads of state are expected to arrive for the funeral. US President Joe Biden, our Governor General David Hurley and Prime Minister Anthony Albanese. A reception for foreign leaders will be held at Buckingham Palace probably on Tuesday the 20th of September. The Queen's funeral will be held shortly before 11 at Westminster Abbey before a gun carriage procession through London streets. The Queen's final journey will be to Windsor Castle in a hearse, where there'll be a private burial service and the monarch will be reunited with Prince Philip. The King won't be crowned immediately. The Queen's coronation didn't happen until a year after her father's death. Eddie Meyer, Nine News. A change of monarch will force alterations to the symbols we've become accustomed to for seven decades, from the coins we use to the appearance of passports and titles of senior lawyers. The Elizabeth era is over. Her likeness has graced our public life for decades, a constant in an ever-changing world. Now this too will change. It's enormous the number of things that will have to change, but they're going to have to change uh, slowly. The Queen's birthday long weekend stays, but with Charles on the throne, future holidays will mark the King's birthday. But already in Australia we have different dates where the Queen's birthday is celebrated. And of course they've got nothing to do with the Queen's actual birthday anyway. This year there might well be an additional day to mark Queen Elizabeth's passing. When it comes to currency, our $5 note is the only one with the Queen's image. It's unlikely to change for many years. New coins, though, will be minted in the next 12 to 18 months once a portrait of King Charles III is approved for use. But he will face to the left, not right. The English royal family has a tradition of changing the direction uh, of, the, of the monarch uh, each time the monarch changes and interestingly that dates back to King Charles II. He wanted to indicate a change of direction and it's been a tradition. Some of the most extensive changes will be for the legal profession with the late Queen intertwined in many procedures and formalities. Already senior barristers who were Queen's Council or QC have changed to King's Council, KC, but the changes won't end there. People are prosecuted in the name of the monarch, so cases until this week were brought by the Queen against accused persons. From now on, they will be brought in the name of the King. In one strange quirk, Victoria's Parliament will not be able to resume until each MP has sworn allegiance to King Charles III, the only state where that is a requirement. One thing is clear, the remarkable reign of Queen Elizabeth II is unlikely to be matched. Charles, of course, is 73. He won't have a 70-year reign on the throne. So therefore, people are already looking to the new Prince and Princess of Wales, William and Kate, and their children. And it's very clear that that's where the future lies. And I think for many people, that's perhaps the reign that they'll become more excited about. Eddie Meyer, Nine News. Kelly Haywood is next with your weather forecast. Welcome back. Well, a beautiful spring Saturday has turned into an even nicer evening this evening down here in East Perth. Now, we hit a top of 22 degrees today. That was after our overnight low of just below 8 degrees. And right now, here in East Perth, just outside Optus Stadium, it's 16.5 degrees. Looking to tomorrow, a trough will move across the southwest of the state in the evening, bringing some showers and the odd storm. That weather is set to hit us here in the city on Tuesday. Around the nation, Adelaide is in for a cloudy day, 16 the top, Melbourne showers in 17, a chilly 2 degree start for Canberra and 21 degrees ahead in Sydney. Back into WA we can expect a sunny 31 degrees in Port Hedland, a 28 degree Sunday tomorrow in Newman and 25 the top for those in Meekathurra. Looking further down the coast, Durian Bay is in for a top of 22 degrees, partly cloudy and 19 for Bunbury tomorrow and 21 the top for Albany. Out on the water, seas will barely reach a metre. Swell though could get up to 1.5. Now it will be a nice day to get the boat out tomorrow, 23 degrees and mostly sunny. The slight chance of some morning fog about. But the rain returns for the start of our working week, a shower or two on Monday. And it will only be very light though and most likely in the evening. And that's because the heaviest falls, well they move in on Tuesday. Thunderstorms and up to 25 millimetres expected. Showers will ease come Wednesday though, 3 millimetres and a top of just 17 degrees. 19 for Thursday, 20 on Friday and down to 7 degrees overnight. Then a 21 degree, mostly sunny Saturday. Now before we go, we here at Channel 9 would like to wish Arthur 
Leggett, a very happy 104th birthday. Now we know you're a Dockers fan, so hopefully they get a win tonight. And at least we have uh, some beautiful spring weather this weekend before that rain moves in next week. Natalia? Yeah, beautiful day on the way tomorrow. Kelly, thank you. And that's Nine News this Saturday, the night Charles III was officially proclaimed king. Thanks for your company. A Current Affair is next with Deborah Knight. Enjoy your evening. Good night.